Greetings, programs. This is Wretch. Welcome back to Masquerada Songs and Shadows. And we're in the middle of making our way up the singing tree to find Calden. Um, pretty impressive piece of plant life, I have to say. It's almost a building in itself. Very elf-like. But, um, we'll make our way up. But first, we got some of that juicy lore. Oh, there's Calden right there. Never mind. <laughs> that was a quick trip. Songs and Legacies. There you go there, lore hunters. And let's have a chat with our uh, water brand. I'm sorry. A strange choice of greeting. That mask runner. If I hadn't done what I did, maybe she wouldn't have died. She wouldn't have been the first mask runner you've killed. It's not about me. If she was still alive, maybe she could tell us where my brother is. Or where to find the artifacts. You heard. And learning how to create masquerines again is... huge, I know. But somehow, compared to finding my brother... I say that I'm scared for him. But in the end, it is I that undermines our progress to find him. Razatov is that much further away now. Five years ago, I was put on an investigation that led me to discover that my brother had been siphoning masquerines out of the Hall of Bearings. I didn't join him in the endeavor, obviously, but I let him go. When the Registry found out, and word spread, the consensus at the time was that I had to be punished. Death by hanging was the easiest option to remind the others what awaited them should they ever place their hearts above their duty. It was your brother that sacrificed much of his clout to negotiate the terms of my punishment. He managed to reduce it from a death sentence to one of exile. Your brother saved my life, Calden. I... didn't know that. We'll get him back, Calden. On your Mariner's Moon. I promise that. Thank you. So now we get some little backstory as to why Razatov is so important to Cicero, and rightfully so. Instead of sins of the father, it's sins of the brother. Well, it doesn't look like we can go back up the tree, unfortunately. That's okay, maybe someone will be waiting for us. First, we shall hunt for lore. Trying to get used to these new sound options, guys. Please let me know in the comments um, if it's okay or not. Because, well, you guys are the best judges. My hearing is actually not too good in real life. Ooh, there's some of that lovely lore. Next to this very colorfully dressed person. Fourth Age. Hmm. Kind of reminds me of the books that you would get in Fable. And the third. The third... Ah, uh, I forget how that's pronounced. Maybe the shortest of them, having lasted only four Masura. Already. Calden? Tides. Who is that? Calden! Please, Orlana. Every marshal that I've spoken to says that you knew him well. Calden, who is this? Inspitore. My name is Orlana Corvale, songstress of the Hall of Songs and sister of Jax's Corvale. Orlana, do not involve the Inspitore, please. I had once tried asking the Registry for assistance, but they turned me aside. Perhaps you will be kinder. Orlana, you must move on. How? My brother is dead, and I know not why or how, and the only lead I have refuses to answer my questions. There is nothing to answer. And so I approach an inspitore who certainly could do a better job than I. Cicero, we have no time for this. 
Let the Inspitore! Jaxus is gone! And no amount of investigating is going to bring him back to the shores of life! He would want you to move on. But please... Orlana... Calvin... A shadow of my past. We should go. A fiery redhead, Calvin? Yeah. Orlana Corvail the first. Or the first entry, rather. So probably she'll join the party soon, or be a significant plot device. Where are we heading to next? Well, we can go to the carriage right now, if we so wish. Nothing over here other than some very nice gardening. I approve. And a cat. Nothing that way. The horses are restless. Hmm. Oh! That guy's been caught taking a whiz. Public urination. Hopefully they don't punish that with hanging. Oh! What is this about? No greetings, even? Stop wasting my time. <sighs> Alright. I want you to be a part of this investigation. What? You have expertise that my team is lacking. This is not a good idea. I can pay you. A thousand crescents. You don't have that kind of money. I will once I finish my job, with your help. Amadea, what is stopping you? Masquerines, the blood of the city. This is our chance to find out where they came from. For centuries, the histories of the land have been enigmatic. For the first time, that curtain is being lifted. Fine. Really? Do you want me to back out now? No, no. This is good. Thank you. Now, where are we going? Toth. Found us a place yet? Yes, we did. We think you'd be most pleased with it, sir. Well, let's hope you're right. <laughs> well, it's good to have Amadea's damage in the party, for sure. All these fiery redheads. So, what fruits have your search yielded? It's a place called the Estiguary, sir. Is it crowded? Not at all, sir. In fact, the place is practically barren, save the people who own it. The owner said there was done a toll, but he's more than willing to house us for the night. For as long as we want, in fact. Generous. How much is he asking? He said it depends on who we bring back. Of course he did. I wouldn't put my trust in anyone who didn't hold a bargain. I'm glad you think so, sir. We're just arriving. My Akbar sense is tingling. That's... Beautiful. All right, Ricardo. I hereby promise never to rat you out. There we go. <laughs> Sir, we'll go in and tell the owner that you're here. We'll be right back. I don't understand. This is too beautiful to be so... empty. The owner was telling us that the people of the city forgot about it ever since the war started. In the first year of the war, the road that led here was frequented by mask runners. Makes sense that people stopped coming. What a pity. I'm not shedding any tears. The more space we have to ourselves, the better, I say. He's ready for you, sir. The Astiguary, the Astigmatism, and Amadea. Hmm. One with a shredded psyche. It makes sense. And what was the other place? Locations. Located in the shore of shadows, the border between the light of the sun and the shadow of the mountain, that moves across the city as the day progresses. The Astiguary is an establishment that belongs to a good friend of mine, Leventhos Meribus. I've never seen it before my return to Ombre. I'm more familiar with the Leaping Lion, Leventhos's previous inn, but I must say that the Astiguary's facade is appropriately reflective of its owner's personality. Despite being in the center of a dark city, 
the astiguary remains beautiful and warm. Leventhos is very much the same. Although he lives in a city of shadows and deception, he has let none of them into his heart. Sounds like our kind of guy. Ooh, even a little blacksmith shop. That's cool. Got a water well right there, stables. Donkeys! Almost too good to be true. And a kitty. <sighs> All right. Let's see. Cicero? Hello, Ven. Wait. You know each other. Spoilers. What? I, I don't believe it. How have you been? I should be asking you that question, you rascal. Why didn't you tell me you were bringing him? We didn't know that. Well, <clears throat> why don't the lot of you find some rooms that suit you? As you can tell, the entire place is basically yours. About that, then. The twins were saying something about price. Ha! <laughs> Cicero, please. What do you think I am? The kind of man who swindles his friends? No, no, that treatment is reserved for the dastardly. You. You stay here for free. Ven, I, I can't. I insist. And I insist not. You will take something, or I'm afraid I'm going to have to walk out. <laughs> All right. But remember, you insisted. Now, please, the... Oh, ages, Lucia. You had me worried. Is this a bad time? I was out in the Pale Isle when I saw you leave the Spire. I hope you don't mind that I followed you. I thought it'd be prudent for me to offer an apology. The rest of you, call it a night. Get a room, get comfortable. I'm certain Leventhus over here can get you all settled in. Definitely. We won't disturb. Promise. I don't know if I trust anyone with a Lando Calrissian mustache right. right off the bat. About suggesting that Avestus call you back, Cicero, I... You can pay me back by telling me all you know about the mask runners. Sorry? Come on, you're hard of hearing now. You said you were investigating them, yes? <sighs> Unbelievable. All right. Over drinks? Sounds like a plan. So, first things first. This Herald. Five shots later. Fractured. Lucius says that ever since the War of Bearings began, the Mask Runners have been fragmenting. Returning back to their factions, the way things were before my brother. And which faction has Razatov? They call themselves the Dactites. They're the ones we met at the Quiet Order. Led by the Herald. Exactly. And what do you plan to do? Find this Herald and get Razatov back. Simple as that. There you are. Is she the result of the cleaver? Result? How did you find us? I returned to the White Spire this morning. Inspiratory Lucia was there. Apparently, she'd been here for most of last night. <sighs> Can't hide forever. Marshal, this is Armadea. She'll be lending us her expertise in the Dementicate. You've spoken to her of the artifacts, then? We have. So, what are they? What do they do? We're not entirely sure yet. Our leads in the Cleaver were... destroyed. <sighs> what are your plans now? We need to get Razatov back from the Mask Runners, a faction of them called the Dactites, to be specific. And we're going to do that by finding the Herald, their leader. Direct. How refreshing. And how do you intend to find this Herald? <sighs> By finding Lysandra Rorik. What? The leader of the Mask Runners. Make a distinction, Marshal. Lysandra leads the Melakate. They're not the Mask Runners with Razatov. Just tell me which groups I should be taking note of. The first, the Dactites. A new faction led by the Herald who have Razatov. The second, what remains of the Melakate, led by Lysandra, my brother's second in command. And you want to find her because you believe she can lead us to the Herald? Yes, and Lucia concurs. Inspitori, those are mask runners you're talking about associating yourself with. We're not colluding with them. We just need information. 
They are fugitives of the law. If you have another suggestion on how we should find Razatov, please, I'm all ears. I hope you know what you're doing. To find her, Lucia has suggested that we turn to a character called the Bloodless. <laughs> I suppose that is a smart move. No. Lucia didn't tell me very much about the man. He is a man without honor. He is a smart man of the Laboris Solus who recognizes the power of information and secrets. If there is anyone that can track a person down in the city, it is him. The Luca have spent years attempting to locate this man. He's crossed more than a few of my guild's boundaries. Note that we are not here to tend to the Golden Guild's interests. You might not be. You think Favio will be happy with you stopping this investigation just to catch one man? Oh, fine. I will not act against him. I do not trust him. Calden. I am sorry, Cicero, but there are entities in this city that I do not wish to be involved with. For the sake of your brother, even? <sighs> as long as I don't ever have anything to do with him. And how do you intend to establish contact with this enigma? You seem to know a thing or two about him. <sighs> I've worked with one of his messengers before. Vasco Tessitore. He's often found in a tavern called the Bleeding Beetle. That is our best bet. Then, what are we waiting for? So I'm gonna go ahead and call my shot now. I think Ven... He might actually be the Bloodless who we're looking for. And he was just sitting there listening to our entire conversation. And you notice that Cicero didn't say anything about what we found specifically in the caves about masquerines being able to be reforged. So, a little bit of intrigue there. Sierra Vede. Got lots of lore here. Calden does not like the Bloodless. Doesn't have a choice there. Tiziana? So the first lie has been fed. I cannot let her know that we have discovered the function of the artifacts that Razatov searches for. If she knows that we have the ability to create masquerines, that will only advance and hasten the Luca's involvement. The Golden Guild needs to be kept out of this for as long as possible. Yeppers? Saw that coming. So we gotta get to Cicero Brothers' second in command to get some information. Which I'm sure is not going to come back on us at all. Heavens no. What do you want? You seem troubled. I stick with you for one day, and already I'm part of plans to venture into the darkest parts of the city. Mars Grenners, the Bloodless. It is often in the shadows do secrets hide. And we are chasing big secrets. What do you think the city will be like, once we find Razatov and the artifacts? Well, masquerines will no longer be scarce, which means the fundamental threads that our society has been woven from will change. How that even begins to affect our world. Well, the guilds might not even need to exist. The titles of Contadoni and Maskrunner might cease to mean anything. I... I really don't know. I suppose we'll find out. And that probably terrifies some of the upper guard, because once everyone's special, no one is special. Sure you don't want to come? Yes. He's going to help us find your brother, you know. Then I'll be glad when he does. I'll see you later, then. So salty. Well, he does come from the ocean, so I guess it only makes sense. I don't know, there's just something about Ven that comes off as very odd to me. He's been he's not been affected. He owns multiple businesses. He hasn't been affected by the city's politics. It seems like a perfect front for a spy master or an informant. Ven, are you still interested in that hobby of yours, collecting stones and fine metals and all that? <laughs> I haven't changed that much. Well, have a look at this, please, and tell me all you can of it. What is it? I was hoping you could tell me. I have a feeling it's got at least a few, uh, special properties. Hmm. 
I'll do some tests and measurements and get back to you about it when you return. One last thing. Don't tell the Marshal about it, if you could. My lips are sealed. And the chapter that we entered into was called The Knife Behind the Smile, or The Smile Behind the Knife. So, Leventhos. Oh, so he knew um, Cyrus. Okay. Well, maybe he's not. He's been watching too many shows. And this is a pretty long entry. The Maribus family. And there are multiple entries here. We've just unlocked the first one. I don't know, like, even if you could trust him, I wouldn't have shown all that stuff, but... It's okay. I would have at least gone up to one of the rooms. Oh, good lord. Entry on the Dactites. And we got... The Bloodless, right? The Bloodless One. Okay. So he is the man with the plan, with all the infos. Okay. Now we've got day two, number one. I've never enjoyed writing in loose sheets. Leatherbound journals have always been my preferred medium of note-taking, and if I'm going to commit to this investigation, then that, this is where my thoughts will go. A brief summary of the investigation thus far. Razatov has been captured by mask runners while researching the or origins of masquerines and how they are created. His investigations led him in search of three artifacts responsible for the creation of masquerines called the Heart, the Seed, and the Knife. Collectively, they were known as the Treror. In the Cleaver, we learnt that he knew where to find these artifacts, but our leads ended there. There are a few other loose ends that need to be wrapped up as well. There was a stone found in Razatov's office in the White Spire, and we have yet to understand its purpose or function. Also, Razatov had been looking into the creation of Fay. He'd stored a handful of them in glass jars in his office, but what that has to do with anything is unclear. Our next major step in the investigation is finding a figure called the Herald leader of the Dactites, a group of mask runners that have taken Razatov, and to do that we're going to need an information broker called the Bloodless. Hopefully he can tell us directly of the Herald and where to find him, but in the case that he cannot, he should at least be able to lead us to Lysandra, leader of the Malkarte, the remnants of the mask runner faction that my brother led. I'm hoping that she, as a mask runner herself, will be able to tell us more if need be. My discomfort with the mask runners has not gone away in the least, but I cannot let that stand in the way of my duty. Indeed. And looks like we can't go back to the blacksmith or anything. That is a shame. Kitty. Check for any more lore. And I chances are good we're going to get into another bit of storyline. Hopefully it won't take too long. Where did you go? Don't be stupid. You've seen how he is. He's a good man, Elena. Even good men have standards. I hope you're not talking about me. Sir! Sir! We were just... Nothing. You were just... nothing? Well, if that's really the case... We'd like to practice the visifer, sir. Brother! Both of you? I apologize, sir. My brother... Let him speak. Yes, the both of us, sir. Uh, Meliari for myself and Messaniari for my sister. Well... Uh... If you want to practice the Visiva, you're going to need a piece of equipment from a masquerada, aren't you? Yes, sir, but we understand if you don't want to do this. After all, we have nothing to our name and no credentials and... Will this do? Sir... That's not an answer. What? Uh, it would do fantastically, sir. There's enough space for the inscriptions involved in Meliare. And the blade is more than enough to paint on. Are you sure, sir? Well, the worst that could happen is I get an ugly blade back, isn't it? All right, just a minute, sir. We'll do some basic forms. 
Oh, cool. Now, moments of truth. Hmm. The energies do flow smoother. It worked, brother. I don't believe it. Thank you, sir. Well, if there's anything more I can do... Sigil, sir. Anything that has complicated Dementicate symbols, I'd like to try my hand at the more complex workings. Well, I'll keep an eye out. And you, Elena? If you could find plants of the more exotic variety, I could use their dyes. A larger palette drastically alters the effects of Messaniare. I'll bring back anything I can find. Now, hold on. Since you're both trained in the Visiva, you think you could handle this? Raw masquerines. I don't intend on getting bogged down with the documentation if I have to go through the Registry's artisan to get these touched up. Sir, this is basic work. We can get these up to scratch in no time. Good. Until then, however, we have business to attend to. Where, sir? An establishment called the Bleeding Beetle. You know of it? It's one of our favorite haunts, sir. Excellent. Off we go, then. Well, then. Holy crap. New engraving obtained, new ink obtained, inks and engravings. Let's look at the uh, entry here. This is under magic. The Visiva revolve around and aesthetically enhancing the equipment of Masquerada, from their wardrobe to their weapons to masquerines even, in order to bolster their abilities. These augmentations take the forms of engrave means, or engravings in Meliara and painted symbols in Messinaire, I, <laughs> I forgot how that's pronounced, and both assist the Masquerada who wears the equipment to better channel their powers. The Visiva are unique among the media, for the engravings need necessarily be performed by a person in possession of a masquerine. Yes, a masquerine is needed in order to benefit from the augmentations, but the actual process of the application of such enhancements can be done by even Kotadane, however rare that might be. Well, I'm a big fan of our, uh, of our carriage drivers now, even more so. So I think I will go ahead and end the episode here, guys, and we may play around here with this smith and see what we can do with those raw masquerines and then go track down the bloodless. Hope you all have enjoyed it. If you liked the episode, please leave a like down below, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, that'd be a big help, and we'll see you next time. Later days, everyone.